Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I will tell you some new amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. Today's story is Drunk Policemen I have such luck to live in a small, four-level apartment building with 26 flats in it, and half that many parking spots. So not everyone gets a parking space, and one apartment, a childless couple, somehow took two spaces, with a cherry on top that our building is just across the restaurant with a mere four or five parking spots, for three times that many tables. So I came home one evening to see a car with a license plate of a city a hundred kilometers, far for us, away in my spot, unknown to me, so it wasn't a neighbor that renewed his ride and didn't yet transfer it. Annoyed by this, because it became really common lately, I see that the parking lot is full, and because my spot is at the end, it has a triangular half spot just beside it, and a wall that was dedicated for a motorcycle, but unused since I sold my Trans Alp. I'm a Honda fan, with cars too, a year ago. So I parked my car 90 degrees behind his, all the way to the wall, so that I don't annoy other neighbors trying to get out nor leave my car on the street which my wife did six years ago and her car was stolen. But that didn't clear the imposing car completely. So to get out, he or she needed to call me or be very precise in squeezing between the back of my car and the neighbor's car. He or she chose neither. Maybe 20 to 30 minutes after, someone rings my bell. And it's my next door parking spot neighbor telling me to get down fast because the owner of the car is calling the cops after he told them he'd help him steer through or call me to move my car first. So clearly, an idiotic move, to which I reacted promptly and got out in just a few minutes. Alas, few minutes too late, because the cops were already there and writing me a ticket on my building's private parking lot for my parking spot. It got out of hand pretty quickly, because I'm a bit short-tempered and the cops just seemed to have something against me. I'll learn what days later, from the very first word spoken. Of course, I wasn't that naive to not know that I had made it hard for him or her to get out, but I tried telling the cop that they are in a private parking space of a private apartment building, to which he just said, your ticket's almost done, signed below. I was having none of it, so I asked for him to, if he already gave me a ticket, 43 euros approximately, if you pay promptly it's half that to issue one to the offending vehicle for improper parking, to which that cop had the nerve to say, prove that it's yours. Now, my wife owns our apartment, so there's no lease on it that says specifically, parking place seven right up to the wall is assigned to the number 18 flat. But we all made the signs necessary for a parking lot and put a no parking sign on them, of course, excluding residents, and had that metal thingy direct translation would be a frog, because when you push it up, it raises and becomes a triangular barrier over which you can't park. But mine was broken and couldn't be raised. This was very fishy, but I couldn't do anything about it, because in the eyes of the law, I did partially obstruct his vehicle, which is a no-no, and had no proof that that spot belonged to me. But this is the time where my more easygoing and calmer spouse noticed that the cops smell of booze? Now, I don't drink alcohol, so I'd have, if I wasn't pissed, smelled it too before, but didn't. And when she pointed that out, I realized a heavy beer smell coming from him. A cop on duty. Even a bigger no-no. We tried warning him that we'll call the regular police. Over here, there are many types of police. Traffic, criminal, Xander Marija, aka special militarized police, etc in the hope that they'd let this go. I'd move for him to get out and take my spot, but to no avail. He claimed that we're just imagining the smell, asked me to sign, and if I had any objections, I can go to a judge and complain, and that we needed to leave. I, of course, wanted proof for said judge, because I wanted to confront him and wanted to call the criminal police on them for being intoxicated on the job and while driving to my place and back. So I pulled out my phone to take a picture to which he stepped in front of me and tried to ban me from doing it. You can't take pictures of his car. What the F, man? Who is he if you're giving me so much crap and acting so mean? All this commotion drew my neighbors out. 
They all explained that we alone can park there, and restaurant can suck it along with its guests. More politely than that. And when my wife came down, she took our daughters, with two-year-old and seven-year-old, the older one thought that they came to arrest me. The police have a scary reputation in these parts. Communist era left over. So when she started crying, the toddler also did, because her sister was crying. A mess of which I wanted to end. So I had to think fast. A light bulb lit, and I told him, I won't take any pictures of him or her or their car. I need a picture of my spot occupied illegally for the judge. Nailed it, you effer! To which he thought about a second and moved. So I did use my phone and took two images. And karma arrives finally. Just as I took my images using flash right behind their car in a dark parking lot, stopped and sat down on the stairs, the EB that had already started the car while I was taking pictures, obviously annoyed by the fuss me and my neighbors made, tried to speed away in reverse from our parking lot. And guess what happens if you do that in a parking lot with parallel parking spots and just five meters between them a large Audi estate car? Yep, you hit a car parked across. Now I got up and just calmly said, now you can issue them a ticket and make a report. And guess what the cop had to say to that? You think he took out his ticket book again? Nope. Someone get the owner of the car so they can work it out, so we can leave. What in the world, man? Guess what the EB said hearing that? He was blinding me and with some strong light while I unparked. He's to blame. What the hell, man? I took two images before you even had it in gear, got back to the stairs and sat down. Of course, my annoyed neighbors did what the cop asked. It was getting late. And guess why else? The neighbor whose Audi she hit was a huge a-hole to everyone. Didn't speak with 90% of the building. And so we all couldn't wait for him to get out. I took my ticket paid obligatory half, took my crying kids upstairs, got out of our bedroom terrace, and yelled to those entitled a-holes, a phrase similar to yours, what goes around comes around, with a smile, and left them to work it out. In the end, they paid almost three times more for that a-hole's bumper than I did, which I learned days later when a neighbor told me that, along with, you know the judge was here for a celebration in the restaurant and took your spot? So that's why the cop acted like a total a-hole. Oh well, he got to enjoy a three-month suspension for drinking on the job for his effort. The first thing I want to say is I feel so sorry for that guy. It was an extremely stressful situation for him. I can't even imagine what I would do if I were him. Moreover, the policeman was drunk. Oh my god. He was on duty, but he drank alcohol. What was he thinking? After hearing that, I wasn't surprised that he made such a dumb thing. That guy is driving me mad. He was so irresponsible. He's a policeman. Gosh, I understand that he's also human, but it doesn't mean that he's allowed to drink alcohol when he's on duty. I hope he'll learn the lesson from that situation. The next story is, Old man neighbor stole my boat because the lake is HOA property and he is a member of the HOA. In the morning, I noticed that my boat had disappeared. It was always on the dock when I wasn't using it. It was very convenient for me because my private property was located on the shore of the lake, so I had continuous access to the lake. The only way to access my private dock was either from my yard or obviously by swimming on the lake. At first, I thought my boat had come loose from its anchorages and floated off somewhere downstream. My confusion was quickly replaced by shock as I looked around the entire lakeshore area but couldn't find the boat. All of my neighbors found out that day that my boat had been stolen. On that day, there was a meeting of the HOA members, where this was one of the hottest topics. Fortunately, I am not a member of the HOA, so I did not attend this meeting. But word of mouth worked on the maximum. The same day, a few hours later, my neighbor told me that she saw an old man named Bob driving my boat and sailing on the lake closer to his private territory. Just for your information, he actually lives at the other end of the neighborhood from me. I went immediately to his house just to talk to him. But no one opened the door for me. I started looking for someone who had his phone number. 
It took a long time, but I found his phone number. Without thinking twice, I called him, and he even picked up the phone. I asked him directly if he had seen my boat, to which he replied that he hadn't seen my boat for several years, and he boasted that he had become the owner of a new boat. I asked him how much he bought it for, and he said that he got it at a very attractive price. And then he said that he was very busy, so we said goodbye. I thought that this new boat just looked like my old one, but still, I always kept this option in mind. I forgot to tell you that I called the police in the morning, and they put my boat on the wanted list. On the same day, I received another proof that my old boat was this neighbor's new boat. It was filmed by one of the neighbor's cameras. I realized for sure that it was my boat because I could see the inscription written on the boat. I had a plan. My friend and I took his boat. And at night, we sailed to the territory of this neighbor. We didn't violate anything because we have every right to sail near his land and we even have the right to put on his dock, even if it's his private property. We have laws that prohibit closing access to the coastal zone, even if it is your private property. Can you guess what we saw? My boat was on his mooring, and he didn't even hide it. I climbed into my boat, successfully started it, and just sailed away from there, and went home. At that moment, my friend was filming everything on his phone so that we could have evidence. I contacted my lawyer to show him all of the evidence that I had. The process was launched even as my boat was put on the wanted list. Very quickly, this neighbor was detained. He admitted that he hadn't paid anything for the boat, claimed that it had been abandoned long ago, and insisted that since the lake was an internal lake of the HOA and the property of the HOA, he, as part of the HOA, had the right to use it. Although a few minutes ago he had claimed that he was not just using the boat, but was its new owner. And anyway, I'm not part of this HOA, so even if it worked the way he was saying, it wouldn't work anyway. The HOA boss was very surprised that their HOA was involved in this case. In fact, they had done nothing wrong. I know a lot of stories about bad HOAs, but I don't know anything bad about this HOA because I'm not a part of this HOA and I didn't have any contact with them, fortunately. But you should have heard how scared the representatives of the HOA were. They said a hundred times that they do not and never claimed this lake or my boat. Later, after a difficult trial, he was sentenced. He was to spend the next five years or so in prison. He confessed to everything. But this was not his first theft. By the way, I want to clarify that the boat did not come off its safety mechanisms and float downstream, as I initially thought. He removed it from these fastenings, as he himself admitted. The last story is, Hire me and cut off my access? I have all the copies. I started in January 2020. An odd interview procedure, strange boss. But that doesn't matter. As long as she leaves me alone, I can work. I had terrible instruction. I learned practically everything on my own, and COVID sent me home to work from a distance. There was no reason why we couldn't stay at home. Two and a half months after beginning the position, I worked from home and soon rose to the position of team leader. Woo -woo. Due to my ability to manage them, I was given more vendors in addition to the biggest account in the firm. In the year of 2021, they've been promising us that we'd be back at work in no time. They even repeatedly told us that we didn't need to be there because we could all work more effectively at home. We were told that we weren't recruited to work remotely, but none of us were eager to go in to support middle management's need for their empty, newly remodeled office space. My husband and I made the decision to begin trying for a pregnancy in the middle of 2021. We should all report in soon, according to my supervisor, as COVID is virtually gone. Continue working from home when pregnant. That will change, they keep promising. Finally, they inform you that you must attend two days a week. I was 38 weeks along in my pregnancy at the time. Nope, I have a medical note. They were outraged, but were unable to contest it. When I was nearly 37 weeks pregnant, they eventually found a temporary substitute and forced me to teach her. Very last minute, by the way. Sure. Then, 
She gave up. I discovered another, and I only had three days to train this woman for a position that typically requires months of training. Whatever. Have a baby, take a nice vacation, etc. I meant to start back on Monday. I returned to over 900 emails, and my supervisor had been silent for hours the first day. After a week, I learned that my temporary substitute left because she couldn't handle the workload, whatever it takes to manage the baby and laptop with ease. Finally, my boss calls me and greets me. She talks about how the team is disintegrating because the majority of the members are older and not in excellent condition, and how we weren't given permission to make a crucial additional recruit. Okay, nobody mentioned entering anything. Later, I received an email asking which two days I'd be coming in. I'm not at ease, ready, or able to physically come into the workplace, I retorted. The following morning, the boss of my boss phones me without saying hello or welcome back or anything of the sort. She claims, it is required of employees to visit the office two days every week. We will assume that you have resigned if you don't arrive. I froze and was lost for words. My husband and I agreed that I should just get fired. You're not giving up. She continues by saying that they cannot make an exception since it is above her. We were previously assured that it was not, as it is up to each department. I can't do both, she adds. I need to get childcare. I'll have till Tuesday of the next week to come up with a solution or resign. Monday evening. Just sent an email criticizing how they handled everything, including my pregnancy, my return, the pandemic, and the staffing shortage. Said my workload and recent turnover. I'm astonished they'd even think about letting me go. I'm not stepping down. I'll keep working from home until they tell me otherwise and take away my access. I don't care which way it goes. It might go either way. Edit. A brief update for Tuesday night. So, there hasn't been an update, and I haven't posted anything yet. I completely anticipated receiving a termination email when I logged on to work this morning, and that would be it. In all honesty, I was somewhat anticipating it. Not at all. Phone silence. Nothing. And nothing happened. Actually, my supervisor emailed me this afternoon, as if nothing had happened, over a minor client issue. I'm not sure how to interpret that. I recently returned from maternity leave last week and was instructed to come into the office for two days a week. I refused. I'm able to work from home, and I will. The following morning, my boss's supervisor called and threatened to take my resignation if he didn't come in. I had a week to figure it out, they said. I only need to be in the office to support middle management's existence and the use of our recently remodeled facility. Before my week was up on Monday, June 20th, I emailed my employer and her boss an email informing them that I would only be coming in for one day a week as per policy. I behaved professionally, but brutally, honestly. I actually opened the email by stating that I don't think my return's feelings were returned. I took note of how my role was entirely ignored throughout my three-month maternity leave and that there were over 800 emails and 800 different items in my queue. Now my temporary substitute quit, that management did not debrief me when I returned, and many others. I expressed my surprise at their suggestion of losing a vital team member, and noted how many branches and vendors were relieved to have me return. For my job, going into the office is entirely superfluous. Thus, I will not do it. I'm not able, willing, or comfortable doing it. I'm not attempting to find work. I'm not attempting to file a lawsuit for something like new mom prejudice. I'm thinking I won't be required to repay anything from my leave if I'm fired for rather than quit. Sure, perhaps I'm also being a little petty, but screw it. I cannot and will not come in. I might as well try to resist it if I'm going to quit or lose my job. I need to take care of a new baby. I fully anticipated receiving a termination notice when I logged on the following day. That wasn't the situation, though. Again, phone silence absolutely nothing. The one time I didn't expect them to was when they simply left me alone to work. If I'm being really honest, hardly much had got done. While I waited, I learned that an employee from another team had been permitted to continue working from home. I was furious. Ecstatic for her, but furious. She lives very far from the office, making it impossible for her to travel there. She eventually called me on Tuesday, June 21st, and claimed that her boss had sent her an email with my boss's boss copied on it, and that she is now being forced to come in. On Friday, they had nearly finished arranging for her to live there permanently when they abruptly changed their minds. To be consistent, they say. She was furious. This was never what I meant to happen. 
She chose to fight back as well, though she gave me absolutely no credit. I had no idea what they were attempting. There would have been a few additional instances where folks weren't compelled to enter. Again, initially, we were told that it was up to each department. But at this point, who knows? Perhaps they're attempting to forbid any exceptions so that if they terminate me, I won't be able to allege discrimination and file a lawsuit. I don't really know. I also searched on Indeed as recommended because I was curious. There were a ton of jobs available, some of which pay way more while being remote that I could totally take on if I choose to put off taking care of my infant for a little while. Three months is insufficient. Guess what I discovered? My job posted, paid in full. The highest end exceeded my income. Do you need the date? Monday, 613. So they placed my position online as available and urgently hiring on my first day back to work following maternity leave. I'm not sure if it happened before or after I initially told my employer no, but because I sent my first email after business hours, I'm guessing it happened before. They never utilize Indeed for open positions either as well. That crap is expensive. I was so mad at that point. I told my employees and let them know the pay so they could make sure they were getting paid at least that much. Someone's interviewing with them this week, according to a coworker. We decided to cancel the next day, Wednesday, yesterday, because screw it. I get sick days. I have another update for you though. Today, June 23rd, I received an email from my boss's boss. It said, Morning. I delayed responding because I was speaking with top leadership and HR. One day a week in the office would replace the current approach of working from home. A generous work-life balance is encouraged, although leadership is determined that spending one day each week in the office is necessary for communication, training, creating relationships, etc. Additionally, according to recruiters, one day per week is incredibly generous, given that 95% of businesses now require employees to work three to four days a week in person. You must be aware that we will accept your resignation if you choose to skip one day every week. Who has thoughts? I'm not totally sure why she believes I'll give in. Amazingly, they haven't simply fired me. I'm not giving up. The key issue is the principle. Too late to turn back now. Before the next update, I'd like to say that I honestly don't understand why some employers are so against people wanting to work from home. There are quite a few positions that don't require constant presence in the office at all. It's especially rational to work from home when, for example, you live far from the office or you have some other factors that don't allow you to come in regularly. Many companies lose very valuable specialists because of this weird policy. Update 2. Well, throughout the weekend, I really pondered about what to do. No turning back now, right? What was the point of my fuss if I said okay? Enough said. My husband encourages me and is also sort of living through me. I responded to my boss's boss most recent email this morning, including the following. Good day. I'm sorry for the wait. Please be aware that I have not offered to resign and will not do so. Something that was never offered cannot be accepted. As I have been, I'm more than capable of working remotely. I'll carry on doing so until you decide it would be better to fire me and lose a valuable employee. You have every right to end our relationship and my employment, but just to be clear, I am not doing so voluntarily. I received a call from HR and my boss's supervisor about an hour later. Do not respond to that stuff. I require a documented trail. Over the phone, they say dumb things all the time and I lose all memory of them. I'm aware of my limitations. She made three calls. Due to the sensitive nature of our communication, I messaged them and stated that I would want to keep this over email. You need to answer over the phone, she retorted. I disregarded yet another ring. If you're going to fire me, please just say so, I said. Now, 20 minutes have passed. Boss's boss, we have reached the decision to accept your resignation as a result of your failure to return to work one day each week and to return my calls today. Any unused vacation time is forfeited. You'll be paid through today's conclusion. Your perks end tonight at midnight. If you have any inquiries concerning your health insurance or other benefits, contact HR. We can argue about the necessity of being at the workplace, but... In light of our previous phone talks, I believe it would have been stupid for me to answer your call this morning. I appreciate you not sending this by email. You keep using the word resignation in your sentences. You don't seem to grasp what that means, in my opinion. It was enjoyable. Good luck, dude. I was denied access. Fear not, I have duplicates of everything. 
My entire team texted me to inform me that the department as a whole would be meeting right after that. They were informed that none of them would be changed. I gave up, and they said because I stated that day that I would not be returning, management posted my job last Tuesday, which is a lie. They have already received 63 resumes and have scheduled 7 interviews, also a lie. She wanted them to know that none of their jobs are in danger and that I had made the decision not to return, even though she doesn't believe it will be difficult to fill the position. Yes, but turnover. Wow. All of the employees were furious. Some of them decided to do the absolute bare minimum, while others are relocating for work and demanding for raises. Oh, and I still had more than 200 emails to respond to and more than a thousand items in my queue. They'll definitely find someone for that. So... That's the conclusion of my story. I'll be spending my free time with my happy child and perhaps gently starting to apply for jobs, or seeing what unemployment says, because why the heck not? We'll survive for some time. That's not the reason I did this, though. I was making an effort to defend my convictions, fully conscious of the implications. I am beyond fortunate to be where I am. My husband is incredibly helpful. After I shut down my laptop for the first time, he carried our young son over to me, bouncing and singing, Mama has her newborn baby's mother's present. My heart hurts. That was a cool story, OP. I advise you to contact a lawyer to teach these a-holes a lesson. And get unemployment benefits. Don't worry that your employer might have lied about your dismissal, because it's very easy to dispute. Just ask for a copy of your resignation letter. If they falsify it, too, it's a completely different story because it's document falsification, and it'll end up even worse for them. But there is at least one advantage. You'll have more time to spend with your child. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you soon.